In ICU, a patient develops decreased urine output. Now you are confused should I give fluids or diuretics? A wrong decision could lead to devastating consequences. Today we're diving deep into the crucial and complex world of volume status assessment in critical care. Traditional methods like clinical examinations and history taking have their limits. Trusting them blindly could be a dangerous gamble, especially when every minute counts. Now, what if I told you that combining these conventional methods with cutting-edge technology could drastically improve your diagnostic accuracy? That's right. Point-of-care ultrasound, or POCUS, has emerged as a game-changer, often being considered the fifth pillar of clinical medicine. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of how to make more precise decisions. Traditional volume assessment relies on history and physical examination, which are readily available, cost-effective, and non-invasive. These are mucous membrane examination. Dryness in oral mucosa and tongue correlates with dehydration and hypernatremia. Moist mucous membranes suggest intravascular volume overload. Capillary refill time. Normal refill time is 2 seconds for children and adult men, 3 seconds for adult women, and 4 seconds for elderly. This measure is influenced by ambient temperature and is not an accurate predictor of hypovolemia. Skin turgor and axillary sweat. Poor skin turgor and dry axilla can suggest hypovolemia but are limited by factors like aging. Orthostatic vital signs. A drop in systolic blood pressure, SBP, of greater than 20 mm of mercury upon standing is an indicator. This measure has poor sensitivity and specificity for detecting hypovolemia and has other confounding factors, especially in the elderly. Jugular venous pressure, or JVP. Measured in a semi-recumbent position and compared with pulmonary artery catheter measurements. JVP has varying sensitivity and specificity but is prone to observational errors and is difficult to assess in certain patients like those with obesity. Edema. Presence of peripheral edema lacks sensitivity and specificity for intravascular volume. Edema can occur due to various other conditions, including deep venous thrombosis, hypoalbuminemia, and lymphatic obstruction. Lung examination and chest radiograph. Bilateral crackles and raunchy indicate pulmonary edema. Dull percussion is suggestive of pleural effusion. Auscultation and CXR have limited diagnostic accuracy for pulmonary edema although CXRs often lead to changes in therapy. Finally we have biomarkers, B-type natriuretic peptide, BNP, and N-terminal prohormone of BNP are commonly used but not always reliable. Elevated BNP levels can also be due to renal impairment or dialysis and may yield false negatives in obese patients. Serum carbohydrate antigen 125 is emerging as another biomarker associated with volume overload and heart failure. Invasive methods for assessing volume status are central venous pressure, CVP, measurement. Widely available in ICUs. Poor predictive value for fluid responsiveness. Low CVP, less than 8 mm Hg, suggests fluid responsiveness, positive LR 2.6. High CVP decreases likelihood of fluid responsiveness, negative LR 0.50. Pulmonary artery catheter pressures less commonly used nowadays. Superior for predicting various hemodynamic variables. No significant effect on overall mortality or hospitalization. Transpulmonary thermodilution and pulse contour analysis. Invasive and expensive. Accurate in sinus rhythm and controlled ventilation. Measures cardiac index, C, and dynamic cardiac preload variable volume variation, SVV. Point of care ultrasound, POCUS, for volume assessment. Widespread use, improves diagnostic accuracy. Internal jugular vein assessment. Estimation of CVP possible. IJ diameter of 7 mm correlates with CVP less than 10 mm of mercury. 12.5 mm correlates with CVP greater than 10 mm of mercury. Inferior vena cava, IVC, assessment. Commonly used for volume status estimation. Caval index calculated for assessing raw pressure. Many pitfalls including tricuspid regurgitation, thrombosis, and positive pressure ventilation. Lung ultrasound. Examines B lines for volume assessment. High sensitivity and specificity for acutely decompensated heart failure. 
Lus findings can also be seen in ARDS, chronic interstitial lung disease, pneumonia, and other conditions. Pleural effusion assessment. Useful tool for volume status assessment. High sensitivity and specificity for detecting pleural effusions. Next is focused cardiac ultrasound, helps in interpretation of volume status. Rapid evaluation of 5S, pericardial effusion, LV ejection, RV and LV equality, aortic exit, and IVC entrance. Imaging techniques. Plax view, left sternal border at 2 fourth intercoastal space. PSSA view, rotate probe 90 degrees. A4C view, transducer near apex of heart. Subcostal, sub xiphoid 4 chamber view. Pericardial effusion, sub xiphoid view most reliable. Small effusions less than 1 cm, moderate 1 to 2 cm, large greater than 2 cm. Sensitivity 96%, specificity 98% in ER. LV ejection fraction, LVEF, qualitatively estimated for hypotension, chest pain, and dyspnea. Plaques view with MVE point septal separation method, EPSS, useful. Quantitative assessments. Left ventricular internal diameter in diastole measurements. Smaller diameters suggest hypovolemia. LVN diastolic area less than 10 square centimeters suggests hypovolemia, greater than 20 square centimeters suggests overload. RV and LV equality, assessed best in PSSA view. Normal RV, LV diameter ratio is less than 0 0.6, 1. The use of VEXIS, Doppler ultrasonography aids in assessing volume and venous congestion by evaluating hepatic, portal, and intrarenal veins. Hepatic vein visualization uses pulsed wave Doppler. Reversed waveforms indicate volume overload. Portal vein pulsatility index above 50% flags severe volume overload, with exceptions for cirrhosis and thin adults. Intrarenal vein assessment reveals waveform changes in venous congestion, including absent systolic flow in severe cases. Venous excess ultrasound score, VEXUS, identifies venous congestion in Aki due to cardiorenal syndrome. Carotid artery Doppler, combined with passive leg rays, PLR, predicts fluid responsiveness. Clinical exam often falls short in volume assessment compared to POCUS. One study showed a 32% discordance. Integration of POCUS with clinical exam will help in enhancing diagnostic accuracy. Enjoyed the content? Click the subscribe button below and join our community to stay updated with our latest videos. Bell don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. Together, let's learn and grow. So to summarize the approach in the algorithm, if you face a situation of hypotension or decreased urine output, St. Cross check the history for history of CHF, missed diuretics, increased salt intake, high blood pressure. Next do physical examination and send biomarks. In the meantime do extensive POCUS looking at all possible signs to suggest the volume status. Finally if still in doubt do the invasive monitoring.